Welcome to Power Time. We got an ace in a hole today for you. I'm John, and what we're going to do is we're going to send our camera crew over to the big island of Hawaii, where they're going to meet up with Tom Carpenter over there, and he's going to demonstrate just how easy it is to program Midnight Solar's classic light charge controller. They're not going to take off in this, but they got a nice flight. Hi, Tom Carpenter from Midnight Solar. Well, what we're up to here today is we're going to be changing out this Morningstar TriStar controller for the new Midnight Solar Classic Light. A couple of reasons for this. Though this has been a very good uh, controller here uh, during our comparative testing for the last several years, I'm going to be upgrading this power system. And this is only a 60 amp controller, whereas the Midnight Solar uh, Light is good for 94 amps. So that's half again as much controller for about the same money. The other reason is that I'm not here a lot, and when I am here, I'm in an office that's about a quarter mile away, and I like to be able to monitor the power system, and I've just never been able to get the Ethernet or Internet to work on this particular controller, whereas the Classic works beautifully. You just plug it right in, and it pops right up on my local application. I can monitor it, make changes, do whatever I'd like. So we'll show you how to do all that as soon as we get this thing changed out. Okay, well... We've got our classic light installed. We've got the charge control input and the solar array input breakers connected, and we've connected it to a Cat5 cable, which is plugged into my local network. We haven't actually turned this on yet, so I haven't tested this. This will be a first time run through out of the box, just like you're gonna have to go through. So what should happen when I turn on the charge controller breaker, the controller obviously goes into its little self-test mode, blinks all of its lights, and then what should happen is down here on the computer screen, the local, hey, there it is. The local app, which is what I've got running here, that would be the one that we've just connected. So we can go up here and click on status panel for that. All classics out of the box call themselves classic. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go down here to configure and then classic. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename this. So we click on that. We'll backspace out, and I'm just going to call this light because it is a classic light. And I've got all kinds of other classics on my network. And you just hit the little enter button, and it tells you that it has sent the data to the classic. And now what we can do is go ahead, since we're in this screen, we can program the classic light from the local application. There's two ways to program it. One is with dip switches, and we'll show that to you. We're just going to go ahead and tell it that it's a 24 volt battery. And we're going to set our absorb voltage, 29.2 on this particular battery bank. Absorption time, two hours, that's fine. Minimum absorption time, 30 minutes, that's, I like that default. Then you've got a few other things you can change here. Your EQ voltage, we won't worry about that. Uh, for now, it's at 29.2. Uh, float voltage, 27.2, I like that number too. We can set our maximum output amps, and because we know that this controller is good for 94 amps. We'll go ahead and scroll that all the way up there. And our input amperage, we're going to default that down to about 70. So we go up here, and we've got uh, a few other charge control parameters, ending amps and rebulk volts. Well, we'll set the rebulk volts down to 25. And that's if it goes um, uh, into float, and you've got a lot of DC loads, which I actually do on this system, when it goes down below a certain number, it'll go ahead and do another bulk charge cycle. 25, there we go. So after you're done setting all of those, you simply go down to the bottom of that particular screen, hit the little enter button, and it'll tell you that you're gonna change your battery voltage, and you say yes, and data has been written to the classic. Now we can go ahead and fold this screen up and we can turn on the PV array because the controller is completely programmed. So we turn on the PV array. We see we got 79 volts coming in and uh, we're now making uh, 332 watts, 24.9 volts on the battery, 13 amps going into the battery and uh, hasn't made any kilowatt hours yet because we just turned it on. Okay, well we've shown you how to program the classic light using a PC and a network. Now we're gonna show you how to program the classic if you don't have a PC using our dip switch controls. Because the Classic Light doesn't have the Midnight Solar Graphics Control Panel, we give you this much more simplified display, which has a series of LED lights to tell you what's going on. 
you've got an amber, a yellow, and a green light up here in this little window that correspond to bulk charge, absorption, or float. You've got an amber light here and here that give you the error lights for current limit or ground fault. And then one over here that tells you whether it's an EQ mode or not. And that's exactly what they look like. So we're going to show you now how to program this using the dip switches that are built inside of this little box. Simply remove the cover. And Midnight Solar, always thinking about the installer, gives you the Midnight Solar exclusive technical installation toolkit. This consists of toothpicks. Turns out the lowly toothpick is the perfect tool for setting one of these little dip switches. You can turn it on, you can turn it off just like that. The switches briefly allow you to adjust the mode, solar, wind, hydro, uh, the various um, system voltages, 12, 24, 48, and the battery type, sealed, absorbed glass mat, etc. Uh, and then this allows you to set either auto EQ or manual EQ. The next set of eight switches go into setting the DHCP to static or dynamic, the IP address, Modbus port, and the last switch is not used. That's all there really is to programming one of these things. Our manual goes into detail on exactly how all of those switches would be set up for your particular system. All right, well, we've got the Midnight Solar Light installed, working, programmed uh, using either the dip switches or the PC and uh, that should allow me now to go ahead and put the basically 25 amps more worth of PV modules on the system with the higher, cap higher capacity controller here. So for Midnight Solar, this is Tom Carpenter signing off from Hawaii.